Hello, we're here with women's head coach Nick Cal for our Hilltopper preview for the fall sports. And coach, I want to thank you again for joining us here this morning. Actually, it's still morning time. So tell us, uh, give us an outlook of how you think this season will play out with the amount of people that you have returning on this squad this year, because you do have a lot. Yeah, we only really lost um, Olivia Collado, who was a big loss for us. She's an All-American, and uh, we certainly have big shoes to fill um, with losing her. But most of our other starters are back, and we have a good core of freshmen and transfers coming in. So overall, I'm pretty hopeful that our team's going to be as strong this year, um, if not stronger. You bring up an interesting point. Yes, you do have a, some new people coming in. And that begs the question, is there a lot of competition going into this past week of training before the games actually start? Or is it more that you have the lineup set in your head and you're willing to roll with a lot of the returners from last season? No, there's been a lot of competition. And I anticipate there being five or six new starters this year um, based on their performances so far. So part of the success of our team over the years has been that um, – when new players come into the program, they have an equal chance to become starters. Um, nobody's place is guaranteed. And I think having that um, type of system in place keeps people on their toes and makes sure that when older players come back, they know they can't just relax on and rest on their laurels. They have to come back and be in, in great shape and also play hard every time they go out there. Talking about playing hard, you deployed a very high-flowing attacking system last season. And, of course, your players had to be in tremendous shape because they're pretty, pretty much playing box-to-box box in most cases. Do, can we expect to see a little bit more of that this season, or are you planning to change things around? I know we don't want to give too much away, but a lot of the fans out there are pretty curious. Sure. I mean, part of our system is to be very offensive. Um, we feel like the, the best way to play defense is on offense, and I think this year we'll continue that, and uh, we feel like in women's soccer that the, the benefits of having high pressure on the other team uh, far out, outweigh the risks. Um, we do obviously take some risks with our, our formation, but I think that uh, we have the athletes who can cope with that, and we like to put the other team under pressure and see if they can handle it. If the other team can handle our pressure, then we'll take our hats off to them and say, great job. But not many teams have been able to do that. Coach, the, the type of players that you have on your squad, they're very athletic, but what would you say is the biggest strength overall for your soccer team? Um, I think the biggest thing that we've had over the past couple of years is really a really strong team chemistry it's something that we will work on every day I think that team chemistry is such an important part of any college athletic team but in particular um, the sport that we're we know about in women's soccer um, in order to be a successful team you have to have good team chemistry and if you don't have team chemistry you can have the most talented players in the world you're not going to go anywhere so we feel like team chemistry is really important and then also having strong leadership on the team I feel like that um, the older players on our team basically are the culture of our team and they need to know what the expectation levels are um, for the younger players when they come in because as a coaching staff we're only with our team for an hour and a half a day but they're with each other 24 7 so it's important that the culture of the team comes from the older players that are that are within the team coach so looking at the schedule for this coming season how do you feel about, especially the opening game uh, within the first week in your non-conference schedule against mm -hmm. Metro State, considering what happened in the playoffs last season? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, we have a couple of games before we get to Metro State. So, um, you know, our philosophy is to take one game at a time. We know that we have some tough teams coming up, um, starting off with our own tournament here with Southern Nazarene and Texas Women's. Um, and then we take off on a trip um, to Denver to play two NCAA tournament teams in Metro and uh, Regis, who are both very talented teams. And then we head out to New Mexico and play uh, two other talented teams out there in West Texas A&M and uh, Eastern New Mexico. So we deliberately uh, schedule strong teams at the start just to, uh, to challenge ourselves and see where we are. So um, we're excited about the start of the season. We're also um, always a little nervous because we never know how things are going to go. Your, your squad's actually picked to win the Heartland Conference again, so to repeat as champions, and has gotten some love by the national media. Does that add any more pressure to your squad going into this year? I don't think it really adds pressure. The, the pressure that we have is just what we bring on ourselves, and I think the, the pressure is, is positive in that we expect high things of our team. We don't really have to verbalize our goals anymore. Our goals are pretty set from year to year. The expectation is to win 
the conference and to make the NCAA tournament and to go as far as we can um, within the NCAA tournament. So um, we don't really talk too much about our goals. I mean, the goals are set, and I think uh, within the culture of our team, I think that everybody knows what the expectations are. Hello, everybody. I'm Justin Simmons, and standing alongside me is Logan Lawrence, the Sports Information Director here at St. Edwards. We're going to be talking about women's soccer right now. And, Logan, you heard that interview with Coach Cal a little bit earlier. How good is this squad? You know, uh, the outlook is great this year. Uh, they've only lost one starter from last year, Olivia Collado, uh, All-American she was. However, they have reloaded this year with tons of talent, and they have tons of people coming back as well. Um, you know, the outlook is great. I, I, I see another successful season here on the Hilltop, and uh, I'm sure Coach Cal is pretty uh, enthusiastic about his team this year as well. You mentioned that they have a lot of talent coming back, and while this is true, how do you think that new talent is going to play with that old talent that's returning? Because they do have a lot of returners. Uh, well, I mean, you know, team chemistry is always pretty uh, key for, for any team. Um, Women's soccer has done a really good job here on the Hilltop of, uh, of mixing in new players uh, and um, adapting to different styles of play. Um, they all buy into what Coach Cow is, is preaching, and uh, it, it's worked the seven years that he's been here. Uh, we're ready for year eight. Well, you just did mention Coach Cow and his success here on the Hilltop. He has been one of the better coaches to step foot here on St. Edwards University's campus. These guys play an amazing style of football, and that's – what's going to be fun about this team. Most Americans do knock soccer because they're like, it's slow, it's boring, it can end in a tie, but not with these girls. No. Uh, Coach Scott likes to say that the, uh, you know, the best defense is a good offense. Uh, they put so much pressure on the other team, they don't allow them to attack uh, because they're always on the defense. Uh, they, they run in players left and right, uh, that lops the substitutions, and they don't lose much whenever they bring these substitutions. If not, they gain some talent and speed. Uh, fresh legs, as you call it, and uh, they do a good job of, uh, you know, the, real, the depth is great on this team, and uh, it, it will show out there on the pitch. It's going to be a really exciting season, and we're looking through the schedule already. There's a really big matchup in non-conference to start the season off. I think it's about three games in where they have to, essentially it's an NCAA tournament rematch against Metro State. You, I know Coach didn't mention it, but you think he's kind of hungry for a win right there? I'm sure he is. He he does along with the team. They all do a good job of not looking forward uh, past whoever's next. Uh, they open up with two tough games here at home, uh, and then they take that Denver trip, as you said, against Metro State and Regis, both tournament teams from last year. Um, I'm sure revenge is on the mind, but you know, you know, it's a good team. They played them twice last year and split with them. Actually, they beat them earlier in the season and then lost in the NCAA tournament. So, but that's you know, the NCAA tournament's the one that's fresh on their minds, and I'm sure they're looking to get back uh, in the win column against uh, the Roadrunners. Now, Coach Cal plays it all cool. You can never really see what he's thinking. He just gives you that same demeanor. You know he's excited about this squad. But do you think there's any pressure uh, having been picked to repeat not only as the Heartland Conference champions, but also to make another big run in the NCAA tournament for this squad? I don't know if pressure comes up with a coach who has over 300 wins, to be honest with you. Um, and he does a good job of preaching that to his players as well. It's it's not about the pressure that the other teams put on you. It's about how far you can push yourself. And uh, he does a good job of stressing that in practice. Uh, they've been working out for the last week, uh, as you said, mixing in a lot of new players, so uh, having to learn the system. Um, you know, I don't think the pressure's there because they they handle it well. So, Logan, Coach Cal didn't really specify who he's going to be in the starting lineup, and nobody can blame him. He always changes his lineup depending on who he's going to be playing that week or how the week of practice went uh, going into the games. But this team is just so loaded. They have speed. They have power. They have touch. They can pass. And then you have players like Michaela Engel who just overtower everybody else and can win pretty much any ball in the air. How, how is it possible to beat this team? They just seem too good well I, I think you know it's a mouthful you, you said all the different aspects that this team has and and that's their strength uh they can they can come at you in many different ways uh they like to attack a lot but they have different personnel that can do it from different angles different directions uh it's not right down the center they're not running through the middle of the field every time they're not running through the wing every time you know they're not playing it out of the back they adapt every time to the team and not to mention coach cal goes with who's hot which is good because that's the key to this team is the depth you know, if one player is a little nicked up, you know, he has someone else he can go to. And so that's the key 
to this season is how healthy they can stay, but not only how can they get everybody involved. You make a very good point there. There were some injuries last season, and they were important. They were significant injuries. But for some reason, it did not affect the squad at all. They just kept on rummaging right through the regular season and just racked up a very good winning streak. Not just unbeaten streak, but a winning streak in soccer, which is pretty difficult to do. So Coach Cal really has a good feel for his squad. I think you would agree with that. Absolutely. Um, he, uh, The players that are out there, minus the newcomers, obviously, and, you know, he's only lost one player, so he's got everybody coming back. They already know the system. They already know his coaching style. They already know what they need to do to be successful in this region and the NCAA tournament. And so that plays a big part into how this season is going to go is the experience that they've already gained in the past years. So, Logan, the Hilltoppers? Might have a little bit of pressure on them because they are picked to win the conference once again this season. How do you think it's going to play out? Well, you know, the uh, coaches and the media members in the conference, uh, you know, picked the Hilltoppers first, narrowly ahead of Dallas Baptist. It's going to be a good battle between those two, but there are a lot of teams in the conference that can make some noise this year, uh, much improved teams as well. And not to mention, they're adding four teams to the mix this year who count as conference matchups, uh, Oklahoma Christian, Lubbock Christian, Rogers State, and McMurray. And so it's no longer a home-and-home -home schedule on the conference slate. It's one game. It could be a home. It could be a way. But you're having to play everybody, and every game counts this year. And so it's a little bit different makeup, but I think the Hilltoppers are poised to make another run at the title and uh, you know, advance to the NCAA tournament once again. Well, Logan, it's going to be another exciting year on the Hilltop for women's soccer. That will do it for our women's soccer preview. Why don't you make sure that you come out to Lewis Chen Family Field and take in a couple of matches this season? You'll be glad you did.